Welcome to a very special edition of the Game Informer Show. I'm Leo Vader. With me is Andrew Reiner. Hello. We are just wrapping up a month of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order coverage. We're going to wrap it up with this special edition podcast where we answer all the lingering questions sourced from you, the community, on YouTube and GameInformer.com. This is a special edition of the Game Informer Show that normally goes up every week, every Thursday. And it's not like this, but you should check that out as well. But we've got Game Director Stig Asmussen on the line, and we'll just throw it to him with your questions. Enjoy. Stig, welcome to the Game Informer Show. Hey, thanks for having me. It is great to have you. It has been a fun month. Yeah, are you sick of us yet? We've been talking to you a bunch. No, we can do this all the time. Let's do it every day. Great. Three more months of coverage. Here we come. <laughs> Until launch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, how are things going in the studio, by the way, before we get to the community questions here? Uh, where are you at with the um, game? Yeah, we're just super busy right now, um, trying to uh, finish things up here. The little bit of time that we have left, trying to make it as good as possible, so everybody's kind of... I don't want to say heads down, because there's a lot of communication going on to get things done, but you know what I mean. It's it's uh, rolling our sleeves up and, and uh, trying to hit the finish line. Right, are for you, sure content complete i've heard that as a term or uh, Very good, polishing right? <laughs> <laughs> where are you at in, in terms of that never i mean I, that term doesn't really mean a lot to me um it's because it's you really are working on these things until they basically rip the disc out of your hands but um yeah there's a lot of things that we're still working on um just getting them into the game for the first time and evaluating them and, and everything but it's Everything that we've had planned is is in a schedule, and and um, um, things are starting to like every day. New things are are sliding in to the build. I will never use that term again. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it doesn't hold weight <laughs> anymore. Uh, no, there's there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> okay, let's get to our community emails here uh, or questions. This comes from God on YouTube. Wow, uh, is this f-ing game worth it? Um, absolutely. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, we could have ended this interview get, right there. Everything done that we got to get done. I definitely think it's worth it. But <laughs> we got a lot of work in front of us right now. Great. Just had to set the stage. You know, if the answer was no, then we didn't have to do the rest of this interview. So that's perfect. Uh, <laughs> and then you answered this in the E3 Coliseum interview, but I don't, don't know if a lot of our, our viewers or readers have, have, uh, watched that, but Kevin H. Rafa asks, will there be new game play plus or new game plus? Um, not in a traditional sense. Our design doesn't really allow for that because it's Metroidvania and it's kind of new game plus, um, traditionally means that you start the game with all your abilities at the very beginning and play through again. And that would just break things right off from the start. Um, so we are looking at ways to make, uh, a replay have, have value to it with, you know, the things that, that make our design for the game work. But unfortunately, like, like in a traditional sense, like I said, it's, it's, it's not going to be there. Okay. Uh, Adam Schlobaum asks, uh, are there more force powers than we have seen uh, so far or were discussed in the article? Um, I, I think it, we'll just leave it at that. I don't want to give away any spoilers. Uh, I, what I will say is he, Cal will, his, his force powers that we've seen at the, at, at the show that we shared at E3, everything about him is going to grow and, 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 as he evolves um, into a Jedi and uh, or as he evolves as a Jedi and uh, um, you can expect more, I guess is what I would say, but like specifics, I don't want to really get into that. Okay. Fair enough. Scissor tongue on YouTube wants to know (laughs) if you can (laughs) customize or turn off the HUD. Um, you no, you can't. Okay. What's your philosophy for that? Is it it kind of goes away when it's not changing, right? Fades out. Yeah, that's. I mean, we. we I, I don't. Sh- I'm. Not, I'm not sure we've decided exactly how we're going to ship with it. Um, but we're playing around with different ways to um, make it a, as minimal as possible when you don't need it, but also give you the information um, when it's necessary. So that's we're still tweaking with that. Mm-hmm. But we have a lot of. I mean, internally, we've got a lot of switches and levers that we can pull to um, find the right. Finesse. Zero Spooky Infinite <laughs> asks, will there be any sorts of arenas in the game where you could fight a plethora of enemies? It would be a good way to really have fun with the combat. Any plans for that kind of repeatable combat arenas, or does that not fit in? 
Yeah, you can expect to see um, places across the game where um, and experiences across the game where um, you could fight like multiple waves of enemies in like really kind of like meaty battles. Mm-hmm. Something I'm not sure you want to get into, but a lot of people ask us about this. Riley on GameInformer.com asks, alongside the more difficult Sith combatants with electric staffs, will we also see lightsaber duels against Dark Jedi? Well, we know that uh, we've got a character um, that we revealed at Celebration um, who's an Inquisitor, and she has a lightsaber, so I think (laughs) you can kind of draw your own conclusion there. (laughs) Safe to say. Um, what was that? Oh, no, I'm just laughing at it. <laughs> uh, Rob McCran on YouTube asks, roughly how long will it take for the average player to complete the game? This comes up a lot. Mm. I don't know yet, um, <laughs> to believe it or not. Um, we are doing playtesting, actually a new round of playtesting next week with like our most completed form of the game. And I will say that it's bigger. I, like I thought it was big, but it's bigger than I thought. I don't, with that being said, I don't want people to think that this is just a massive, massive game, but it's, it, it is, there's a lot there. Um, and it's going to, I think it's going to take people longer th- than they expect. Um, but with that being said, it's, it's, it's really hard to gauge right now because part of that might be because the length that we have right now is because we haven't done our job through the playtesting process completely yet. Um, and people might be getting stuck in areas where we don't intend them to get stuck or pathing. doesn't read as clearly as it should, or there's difficulty curves that or difficulty spikes that we, we, um, don't intend. So what it's, it, I really can't give a, a, a time limit on that. I don't, and I don't think we will be, um, and, until much closer to launch. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, it's, but it's not a short game. I hear people saying things like, Hey, you know, respawn like five hours, call of duty campaign, like all that kind of stuff. And it's like, that's not the type of game this is. We don't have any, um, multiplayer. There's, it's really just all about the single player. So to deliver a quality experience, you have to be able to certain to visit a certain amount of locations, experience, um, a certain amount of, you know, play time. that's satisfying. And I think we're, we're definitely in that room, that zone. Uh, Pedro Polero on YouTube asks, will Seer fight in the game? Does she have a lightsaber? I'm going to pass on that one. I'm, I'm sorry. That's, I, I just don't want to spoil things for people. Sure. These are good, very good questions though. Uh, Lionheart from GameInformer.com. Hi guys, we're Stig. Very excited to get a single player Jedi game, Jedi Outcast Academy and the Force Unleashed. Similarly redefined Jedi gameplay in the past. Are there any standout lessons of do's and don'ts that the team took from those games when designing the gameplay of Fallen Order? No, I wouldn't say there was. All right. All right. B Mumble 6 on YouTube. Since enemies... Re- I mean, of course, we, we, we analyzed all those games. And, and we, I mean, I played them growing up as well, too. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, we... we I don't, I don't know that we ever consciously made a list of like, this thing wasn't working in one game and this thing wasn't working in the other. Sure. Right. And or this thing was working. Uh, since enemies respawn after meditating, is there a narrative explanation for the stormtroopers coming back to life? Um, we're still working that out. Okay. Interesting. HD Clifton. It's entirely entirely possible that's just kind of a game layer thing and it's part of just the rules right. of how you play the game. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what it is. I'm, I'm surprised to see that's something you're, you're thinking about, though. That's cool. Uh, HD Clifton asks, do the abilities we've been shown evolve in substantial ways as the player progresses? You talked about this earlier, but can you speak any more to how they're going to evolve? Or is that mum for now? Um, well, I mean, I, I believe uh, we've talked about how there is a skill tree in the game and the players are going to be able to find, gather experience, and they'll be able to invest that into different abilities kind of at their own pace uh, with the kind of the flavor, the, the, the style that they like using uh, uh, the lightsaber and, and, and the force powers that they have. Modi on GameInformer.com wants to know if the game is targeting 60 frames per second on consoles. 
Um, right now we're variable. Um, we, on a certain equipment, you can run at 60 frames a second, and at our low end is going to be 30. Sure. Great. Thank you. Certain equipment, does that mean uh, like Xbox One X? Powerful. Powerful stuff. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm actually not sure what, I, I don't I don't know where we're actually going to land on the Xbox One X. I will say I played it on the, for the, the first time on the One X on Friday, and I was really, really happy with the way it felt. And um, I, I'm not sure exactly what we we're what we were clocking in at, but it felt really good. It looks great too. Mm-hmm. Uh, this comes up a lot too. Noah Sienna's on YouTube is asking: Will the lightsaber be brighter, more vibrant, and more energetic in appearance for the final release? The one thing I'll say is that people are kind of honing in on is it doesn't have like the white light in the middle of it. Is that? By design, is this saber just different in design, or is this like a stylistic graphical thing you guys did at Respawn? Um, I think I think we went to E3 without uh, we we made a mistake on that one, and since 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 then we fixed it. Okay, cool. that 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 was very fair feedback, fair criticism, and uh, we we've we tweaked that. Um, we've also tweaked the shape of the lightsaber uh, blade a little bit as well too. Um, and, uh, it, it, you can, you can see the difference right away. Cool. Uh, Elliot King on GameInformer.com asks, are there any plans to release a playable demo before the official release? I would love to. Um, I, in fact, I, we, we had a little, little discussion after E3 to maybe polish up the, the combat gauntlet that you guys got to play. Ooh. And, um, make that available for the public because I think there's a lot of replay in there as well too. And pe- people would, you know, come out and they'd know exactly, you know, they'd be, be able to hit the ground running when they, when they get the game. But the reality is, is that's a second release that we have to do. We have, that has to go through bug testing. That has to go through, through certification. There's so many different hoops and we're spinning a lot of plates right now. And it's just, it's, it's not going to be possible. Uh, okay. Uh, the lady in the van on GameInformer.com, these names, uh, asks, well, first says hi, and then asks, uh, will this game have a planet? <laughs> will this game have a planet that's more city-based, or are they all from natural environments like a jungle and desert? You know, Cal's journey is, is really about um, growing as a Jedi, and um, we took a lot of inspiration from the Luke moments on Dagobah. So that's why we find a lot of um, pretty much most of the, the places that you're, you're going to go to are going to be kind of like these, these savage, unpopulated areas. And that, that's that's by design. Okay. Bazoinkers on YouTube <laughs> wants to know about different difficulty modes. How many are you looking at here? Um, I think right now we got three. Okay. Dai Bendu Monk. So that's kind of... What was that? Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. So, I mean, they're just kind of like typically what you would expect. Right. By the way, I think Bazoinkers should be a name in Star Wars moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. It's It's a pretty good one. (laughs) Yeah. Good ring to it. Uh, This is a long one, but I think it's really interesting. Daibendu Monk asks, how would you describe your experience at Star Wars Celebration? Going through that initial reveal, what was the energy like in the office after it? And did anything change? And how was EA Play two months later compared to it? Like, how would you compare those two different experiences, revealing the game versus showing gameplay for the first time? Okay, um, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. Um, but it's all, it's, it's a great question, really easy to answer. Mm-hmm. Celebration was awesome. Um, it was pretty incredible to see um, our game out in the public for the first time. The reaction there at the, I mean, really, it was a, I think it was DePaul's basketball stadium. There's like six or 7,000 people there. It was broadcast to millions of people live around the world. And uh, yeah, people were going bananas. Being up on stage, I was so proud. Um, you know, really proud of my team. Um, the fact that I got to go there and represent that was amazing. Um, and I, yeah, it gave, it gave us all a really good charge. Um, also, you know, made us realize, you know, coming back and... Um, reading some of the coverage, you know, and what we see like on Reddit, um, there's, there's a very like very, uh, energetic star Wars fan base. And we knew that. Mm-hmm. Um, but this just to see, see all the, see and hear all the feedback from that was awesome. 
Um, and, uh, you know, we always had this plan like, Hey, you know, we're going to, first we're going to do celebration. Then two months later, we're going to do E3. So we had already been working on our E3 content for months. And that's, there was a, a part of the team that was really, um, focused on working on the celebration trailer. And then there was another part of the team that was, um, working on Kashyyyk. And then there was a little bit of, uh, crossover there. So, um, we, we kind of went from one thing to another and, uh, kept on plowing ahead and E3, you know, everybody coming out of celebration, um, rightfully so said they wanted gameplay. I mean, I will say that like, we didn't think celebration was the right place to show gameplay. We thought it was more about getting the story out there and kind of like what the stakes were. Mm -hmm. But, uh, when I started reading that, I was like, this is great. We already, I mean, we have a lot of gameplay that we could show right now that I think people would really like, but we're going to, that's, that's the way we're going to, we're going to nail it for, uh, E3. And our plan was it's raw gameplay. It's playable. There's no, no smoke and mirrors. It's all real. And, um, it's a real game. Um, we already did our trailer thing. And, um, we actually planned the 30 minutes up front. I think a lot of people think that, um, we put the 15 minutes out there at EA play and then a couple weeks later reacted and put more out. We, we, that, that's all one playable demo. You guys have seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we had it ready to go on the same day as EA play. We had that video ready to go. We had already captured it. Um, and we just wanted to see how E3 went and, you know, EA play went really well, got some, um, had some good conversations with the reporters. I think we, we had a little, some distractions with some of the, uh, articles that were coming out of like talking about things that we weren't or kind of like mis, misrep, mis, misinterpreting what our game was in terms of like its design being very linear. Um, we said, well, let's wait until people get their hands on it. Um, and we knew like you guys at Game Informer had seen it and, uh, and written such a like, you know, well represented article. And, uh, we wanted to see if that was the same type of feedback that we got from other journalists. And it was. And, uh, so, you know, the days and during E3, having people come in and play the game, play the gauntlet, go through the, the big demo. Um, it was amazing. It was, I mean, it was, it was very, uh, electrifying. And, uh, bringing that, bringing that back to the team. Um, it's always hard to, if you're there, you really feel it, but it's hard to really like, kind of bottle up that energy but luckily we had probably you know 10 people from the office that every day were at the uh the e3 event having the conversations with the journalists and the influencers and uh we were able to bring back that message and since that went went so well we didn't find any reason to put out the the longer demo for a while and we just waited a little bit and then one day we just unloaded it and uh that's gotten a really good response as well yeah yeah, so a lot of the complaints people had for the first uh, gameplay reveal, they were assuaded in the second one. And certainly when people actually get their hands on it, I feel like they're going to have a very different point of view than just watching the gameplay. Uh, it's really hard to describe. Yeah? It's really hard to describe. I mean, I guess we could have made like some really kind of polished, fancy, cinematic, not cinematic, but a, a trailer that looks like gameplay that really isn't gameplay and, and uh, um set the expectations wrong and set up some false promises, but we, we just wanted to basically um, pull back the curtain and show what our game really is. Uh, Yazil or Jazeel Rodriguez. I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names mm-hmm. from YouTube. I says, gave you all the hard ones. <laughs> are we going to be able to play as other characters? I'm guessing you're not going to answer this. No. no, you won't. Oh, okay. This, this is a story about Cal. And, um, that's, that's what the game's about. Great. Uh, Braden Campbell on YouTube asks, will we see cameos from any pre-existing characters specifically referencing Mon Mothma and Bale Organa? Organa. Organa. <laughs> I can't answer a question like that. It's, it's <laughs> too loaded. I picked the wrong it's... one to say. You're not going to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Richards wants to know if this game goes well. Is Respawn planning on doing more Star Wars content in the future? It's, you know, definitely something that we can have a conversation about. Our relationship with Lucasfilm is really good. Um, you know, everybody's feeling excited about this. And uh, we want to, there's definitely more stories to be told. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes. I mean, I, I'd, I'd be down for it. Great. 
Bonafide... We're, we're focused on this right now, though. Right, for sure. Uh, Bonafide Vegan wants to know, are the boss fights diverse and challenging? Can you talk about your approach to boss fights at all? Um, yes, they are diverse and challenging. Um, but kind of our approach is whenever we're doing a boss fight, we try to... It's, it's, we call them um, Star Wars moments for this game or traditionally in games I've worked in the past, wow moments. And they're, they, they need to provide a, a lot of spectacle, but also um, do something that's challenging um, and makes you feel like, uh, you know, very kind of satisfied when you complete them. Um, but other than that, it's, 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 there's the criteria is, is, is relatively, um, it, it's left, left up to the designers that are working on it. I mean, we might have maybe a paragraph of what the expectations are for the story and for, you know, Star Wars in general, um, and some, an idea of what, who the boss is or what the boss is and, and how things need to play out. But we, we pretty much allow the people that are, or ask that the people that are working on these things to come up with the pacing together on their own. And, uh, um, myself and Leeds will work on um, guiding it, but this is really about the people that are that are making them. Uh, Fish on GameInformer.com asks, do you feel the pressure to deliver a Star Wars story that fans will actually like? We've been hungry for so long. Let us eat you. Please don't leave a bad taste in our mouths. Well, that got weird fast. Yeah. Uh, but the, the core the question, uh, don't leave a bad taste in our mouths. So Before that. Uh, let us eat you. They want to consume a great story, I think, is the, the right. line of gotcha. thinking here. I get you. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, there's a lot of pressure and, and uh, it's, it's a big it's a big deal. Um, I'm, I'm very confident in this story. Um, and part of the reason why is because you've got a really good crew working on it here. Um, but also because we've worked on it with Lucasfilm since the beginning and, and, uh, we're working with a crew over there that's been there for a while. They've been working on Star Wars games for a while and for a long time, actually. And, uh, you know, I think between all of us, if something didn't work with it, um, we would have figured that out by now, <laughs> but it's really for us, it's about executing. Um, we got to make sure that. Um, even if we've got a good story on paper, it's got to be conveyed in the game. It's got to feel good in your with the control, controller in your hands. Right. Um, but you know, the way I approach this is, and like basically the dealing with the pressure is even to me anyways, even before it's star Wars, we just got to make a good game. And I hold a, uh, really high standard. Um, personally, and uh, it's if if the game is fun, it feels good. Um, the fact that it's Star Wars, and I feel like all the Star Wars elements that we have are great. Um, I think we'll be okay. Mister hmm. McFluffins on YouTube wants to know. I'm curious about the customization. Will there be any variety of clothing or lightsaber color slash hilt designs? This has been answered in our coverage, I believe. But man, people want to know. So many questions about. Yes, it. there will be. Either will be. It's all what we're talking about here with those specifics um, is they're aesthetic, but they're still fun. Mm -hmm. Zangmaster wants to know about lightsaber styles. Will you be able to do like a dual bladed saber style? Any kind of change ups like that? Um, nothing I can kind of speak to concretely. I will say that like we're always evaluating our combat and. Um, I mean, we've tweaked stuff since E3, looking at different things that we can um, add value to the experience. And uh, what we end up having right now might be different than what we end up shipping with. But it, the only thing is it'll be better. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't want to comment on something right now and then not be able to deliver on it later. Uh, B Squared asks from YouTube, uh, is there any space combat? As in, like flying ships and yeah, or that, is that what? Yeah, like ships shooting pew pew at each other in space or in the air. Yeah. 
Um, I would say pass on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like that answer. (laughs) Uh, Matthias Will on YouTube. Can you change the button layout so your attack is on shoulder buttons? Yeah, any button remapping of any kind? You know what? That's a good question. I don't think we have that in the game right now, and I don't know that that's something that we're going to, a feature that we're going to allow. I think um, we've gone through that button layout dozens of times, and we've gotten one that's stuck for the last few months, and that's saying something. So I, th- I think we've got it the way it is right now because that's the way it works best with force powers. Um, I know we did have um, attacks on the shoulder buttons at one point, on the bumper and the shoulder, um, and it felt good. But then once we really started getting force powers in the in the game, we that's why we moved over to the more tr- traditional uh, square and triangle. Right, since the velocity of the force powers matters, right? A half pull of the right trigger versus a hard long yep. one. Right. Yep. Uh, Rosful <laughs> wants to know if you ever considered doing a non-human character for this story early on or anything. Did you have an alien that he says here moves like Sonic or Yoda? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that sounds like fun. Um, cool. We we looked at, um, yes, we talked about doing an alien creature. Um, I think, I mean, we talked about different gender. Um, we arrived at where we were um, because at the time um, Ray was kind of the thing for star Wars. Um, and so it made a lot more sense for us to have a, a male protagonist. Um, and ultimately we, we didn't go with the alien race because we felt like no pun intended that would a- alienate a lot of people. Hmm. Um, we wanted to, we wanted to make sure that like there was a real human connection um, to the character that we have in the game. Although I personally, I mean, I, that's like kind of more the like kind of like broader decision why we did it. Personally, I think it would be really cool to have an alien protagonist. Uh, last, most important question. <laughs> an attack Corgi asks, will there be sand in Jedi Fallen Order and complaints regarding sand in Jedi Fallen Order? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be sand. Um, and maybe we can get... We, I mean, we we had the uh, little joke about the higher ground in our E3 demo, so right. maybe we could get a, we could find a way to get a sand jo- joke yeah. in the final game. <laughs> maybe BD can scan it and then the encyclopedia entry scan it exactly. I was, I was thinking that just now. <laughs> It'd be really easy to get that in there. <laughs> That'd be awesome. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, good luck finishing up the game, and uh, can't wait to get our hands on it again. Yeah, yeah. If you guys want to come down, let us know. We'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Gonna okay. regret that. <laughs> All right. Thanks for everything. Thanks, it's been guys. a super fun month, Dick. Yeah, thanks, Dick. It was awesome. It's a great, great month of coverage. And, uh, you know, thanks so much for um, working with us. And it was great having you guys at the studio. And, um, yeah, we look forward to uh, sharing more in the future. Excellent. Look forward cool. to seeing it. Take care. Well, that was fun. Yeah, he answered uh, some good questions there. We actually got some some new info on the lightsaber that, uh, that they're changing that, or they have changed it, so it'll look more like the one you see in the movies now with the white glow in the middle. Right. Uh, yeah, that was, that was cool to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Glad they're, they're addressing that for sure. But yeah, that, for a lot of the questions we got, we didn't ask because we answered them in our coverage already. Right. So make sure to check out our playlist on youtube.com slash Game Informer or GameInformer.com slash Star Wars Jedi. We've got a ton more exclusive information there. Our month of coverage is complete. That's it. Until uh, maybe we'll get our hands on it again down the road. I'm hoping so. I hope so as well. Hopefully we made a good impression. <laughs> But yeah, check out that playlist and stay tuned to Game Informer. We just announced our next cover, which is Monster Hunter Iceborne expansion. We already have exclusive gameplay up of that. Yeah, we played the hell out of that. Yeah, it's awesome. So stay tuned to Game Informer. Bye.